postmortem biochemical analysis is uh, generally the medical examination of a dead body to discover the cause of death. Eh? So uh, postmortem chemistry mm, it plays a very significant role in uh, forensic pathology uh, and in biochemical analysis of the vitreous humor, cerebrospinal fluid, the CSF, uh, blood and urine uh, are very much important when we want to determine the cause of death or <clears throat> in a situation whereby there are forensic cases. Forensic cases must not only be uh, where there is death because sometimes uh, there might be perpetration and we want to determine uh, whether the perpetrator left some trace evidence behind. So the postmortem interval is the time that has elapsed since death and uh, used to estimate this time interval. Eh? For example, we can use the vitreous humor analysis. The vitreous humor uh, is a 4 to 5 millimeters of colorless gel uh, <clears throat> and uh, it is found in the eye and it is resistant to some postmortem changes due to its uh, location and inert nature. You know the eye is uh, usually one of the biologically privileged areas where most uh, pathogens cannot access. Uh, so we can use the vitreous humor in case we want to determine uh, the time of death. So it is useful as a source of DNA um, or in diagnosis of a disease. Uh, so we can use it to obtain our DNA from the vitreous humor or in case we want to diagnose the type of disease that this uh, an individual died of. Uh, so it has some contents like electrolytes including sodium, potassium, chlorine, calcium and magnesium and their concentration are me measured uh, using uh, various analyzers and this their concentration is related to the time since the death took place uh, using of course various equations th th these different results result uh, due to maybe things like the temperature of the area humidity environmental factors generally affect the vitreous humor humor uh, analysis and uh, type of uh, death that is associated with that so at a higher temperature the concentration are less stable and the degeneration of the sample speeds up when the temperature is high of course uh, the degeneration of the vitreous humor will be higher and uh, the the, 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 the time in which uh, of death will speed up. As the time of death increases, the potassium concentration in the vitreous humor rises and the sodium and calcium concentration falls. So it means uh, we can use actually the amount of potassium in the vitreous humor. If it is so high, we can measure it using a specific equation to determine the time in which the death took place and also we can use sodium and calcium concentration since they fall as the death time of death increases if they are too low we can maybe gauge using an equation the time of death uh, that the individual died the ratio of potassium to sodium decreases linearly with time the reason that potassium level rises after death is, after death is because of a leak in the cell membrane that allows the concentration to reach equili equilibrium with the potassium levels in the blood stream and plasma so since there is a leak in the when when there is death there will be a leak in the membrane of the vitreous humor so the potassium level uh, since it is always low in the vitreous humor it will try to reach an equilibrium with the potassium level in the blood plasma so as a result the potassium levels will be rising higher so it is a good estimate uh, used to determine the time of death so there's also a CSF analysis. CSF in full is called the cerebro cerebrospinal fluid analysis. So it is a cellular liquid that provides a barrier to absorb shock and to prevent injury to the brain and the spinal cord. There are several substances in CSF that can be measured including urea, glucose, potassium, chlorine, sodium, protein, creatinine, calcium, alkaline phosphates, and cortisol. Concentration of these substances can be estimated and this information can be used to determine the time in which the individual died. Uh, so, um, for example, uh, 
uh, a higher concentration of urea indicate kidney disease or from what person what type of disease this person died for example a high concentration of urea may indicate kidney disease high levels of cortisol the hormone released under stress could indicate violent death creatinine is stable post creatinine is stable post mortem so the concentration at death is preserved so the creatinine is always stable so the concentration at death remember creatinine is produced as a result of your action uh, of the your action of the muscles so when you die it means there will be no more production since your muscles won't be moving so creatinine it is stable in post mortem so the concentration of uh, at death is preserved sodium and potassium can be measured in csf to predict the time since death uh, <coughs> but it is not accurate as it will be as it will be when we are using the vitreous humor analysis so we can also use sodium and potassium to measure the time since death but uh, it is not so much reliable as we could be re reliable using the vitreous humor analysis so we can also do toxicological analysis uh, which involve the measurement of the concentration of drugs and toxins and substances contributing to death for example somebody uh, took some uh, poison or somebody maybe was injected with some poison so we can do toxic toxicological analysis to determine uh, the cause of death uh, it is done by comparing the concentration to the lethal limits remember there is a lethal dose in which when uh, somebody takes a certain amount of the dose is what is most important where somebody takes a, a dose of a certain amount of something it leads to death so uh, the most uh, common samples used include blood and urine uh, sample are put through various tests and instruments uh, used commonly uh, the most commonly used instrument is the uh, gas chromatography mass spectrophotometry so there is also we can also analyze the blood and urine blood and urine analysis uh, when blood is used for toxicology toxicological testing drugs are usually target of analysis the toxic substance in blood can be found but the toxic substance in blood can be found but urine kidney and liver only metabolize metabolite may be found this is because of different retention time so we can find the toxic substances in the blood um, but when we are using urine, urine, uh, the kidney and the liver, we only go for the metabolite that they produce. This is where we can find the toxic substances. For example, cocaine can be detected in the blood for two to 10 days, while in urine, it is detected in two to five days. The result of postmortem toxicological testing are interpreted alongside the victim's history 